Hello friends, welcome back to the top tarot trumps throughout centuries feature. And as we have uh, progressed all the way through to Arcanum 16, today we will be looking at the tower card beginning from the 15th century earliest examples all the way through to the representations of uh, this key from a few 21st century tarot decks. As per now usual, at the end of this video, I will share with you my top five historic towers, which will be followed by, hopefully tomorrow actually, by my official, if you will, uh, five favorite towers. The video where I will be sharing with you my favorites, uh, my current uh, contemporary, mainly contemporary, favorite tower cards along with my understanding of key 16 in tarot. Alright, when it comes down to our earliest illuminated Visconti Sforza and Visconti Madrona tiaros, the tower card, just like the devil, is missing from those earliest decks. And while the popular reproductions of both of these Visconti decks originating in Milan offer their alternatives, alternative cards. These are not the original cards and are not very great depictions either. Uh, if you happen to be curious about what I think of them personally. The one painting I do love though, which I uh, was used to complete a Madrone Tiero, is uh, this one. And uh, this is the tower by an unknown artist. Uh, and uh, this is the image that Marco Benedetti used for the tower card in his personal madrona again this is not a tarot tower right it's just an artwork from uh, renaissance artwork that uh, was used to uh, to add the tower cards uh, to the personal madrona tarot Having said that, there is uh, the existing tower card that is a part of one of the illuminated hand-painted tarot of the 15th century. And the card I'm talking about comes from the so-called Charles VI tarot. This is the castle tower, certainly very solid in its uh, structure with the red flame coming from the heaven and causing the crumbling down of this strong tower on the right side of the building. And uh, then uh, these are the two tower cards from the later 15th century woodblock uh, Budapest and Rosenwald sheets. And uh, here we see the fire originating from the tower. Or perhaps here we can also blame the sun for also uh, for causing the fire, right, uh, of, uh, of this Rosenwald tower. Look, uh, many of you have been through the history feature of the Top Tarot Trumps series with me, and you and I both would expect a very popular existing view on the card, on the tower card in tarot being associated with very well-known biblical story of the Tower of Babel or Babel, Tower of Babylon, well, the folklorized version of it was the gist being uh, the expression of the fury of the God when people tried to build the tower so high that it could reach the heaven and with that God and uh, ending with God punishing people uh, 
with uh, giving them that inability to understand each other by confounding their language and with that bringing the frustration to the builders of the Tower of Babel, uh, which resulted in them expressing their anger by throwing each other from the high construction or a part of it that has been built. With uh, Talmud, though, uh, Talmud um, has another spin on, on in telling the story about the Tower of Babel, about, uh, and uh, the story emphasizes the builders being so preoccupied with building the tower in their desire to reach God that they didn't notice when one man fell down uh, and nobody attended to help that fallen fallen man which caused the anger of God and with that punishment in the form of fire uh, th uh, thunderbolts and all the bang we associate with uh, with uh, tower card. Another perhaps uh, second popular after the Tower of Babel hypothesis, still biblical, uh, links the tower card to the seventh seal uh, described in the book of Revelation. By that I mean the opening of the seventh seal. Uh, seal by an angel throwing the fire onto the earth in the form of um, thunder and lightning and uh, um, leaving uh, the earth and uh, the buildings engulfed in flames all that for pur the purposes of cleansing and purifying all the sinners and their sins. Look, for me, even though here I'm presenting it all in the most brief form possible, <laughs> I am able to present knowing the story is, is important, yet uh, like many of you, I don't look at the tower card this biblical way, yet it does help to be familiar with the popular origins when it comes to the associations with the arcanum for us to draw from. And please Please let me know in the comments uh, if being aware of the, well, undeniable, really biblical references in the original historic tarot, not just the tower card, if for you they also hold um, uh, importance in how you see the readings, whether you find them relevant or not, although often the biblical references are not really relevant in our readings, I get that. But then also in uh, her book, um, Helen Farley, this is the book uh, Cultural History of Tiero, which I reference quite a lot in preparation for these videos and in my own Tiero studies. Um, Helen Farley, uh, she hypothesizes further that if the tower cards uh, somehow made its way in the original Visconti Diax, which it didn't, uh, well, not, uh, it hasn't been found at least, uh, the tower card may have been linked uh, with the De La Torres family who, uh, who were the De La Torres family. They were rivals of the Viscontes and of course um, Torre uh, translates as the tower from Italian language and uh, the tower in uh, flames, I'm just put here La Torre, right? The tower in flames could have been interpreted as the destruction of the De La Torre's family, right? Enemies of the Viscontes. Or at least that's the point that um, Helen Farley makes uh, in her book. 
So with that, uh, what we see here already in this existing surviving 15th century images is uh, the pattern that we will continue to observe in Arcanum 16 from the historic decks uh, to come. And th this uh, the pattern being the tower building being uh, engulfed in flames, uh, hinting to us the potential crumb of uh, those constructions, but also bringing the house down too. Next example I decided to bring out today is from the Sola Busca Terror, um, again 15th century terror, uh, which while not adhering to the commonly accepted symbology, these days commonly accepted symbology in terror, it's an important historic deck nevertheless. So in this card we see the character called Nen Broto, right? All the heroes characters in Salabuska they, they do they they have their name written as the titles of the cards. And uh, here we are with this Nin Brota, who is uh, struck by lightning and trying to protect himself from uh, uh, from the lightning, of course, with the, this gesture of his arms. But also here behind him, we observe the pillar falling down, the top of the pillar falling down. This uh, Nimbroto, of course, can be linked to Nimrod, the king of Babel, during the construction of the earlier mentioned in this video, Tower of uh, Babel, or ba yeah, Babylon. As for the whole of 16th century, Tiero seems to have disappeared from Italy for most part. We are now jumping straight ahead into the mid-17th century, beginning with the cards originating in Paris. So, in the anonymous tarot of Paris, Arcanum 16 is called La Foudre, which uh, translates as the lightning from French. And uh, this card is shown as the mouth of hell devouring the supposedly sins. Then, in uh, Jacques Viville terror, uh, also mi around mid-17th uh, mid century, 1645, we are with the shepherd um, trying to shield um, his uh, sheep under the tree, linking this depiction once again to the biblical story from the book of Job, where the punishment of uh, for Job from God was uh, sending the fire to destroy his uh, sheep. Very gruesome story indeed, if you ask me. And uh, while um, the Jacques Viville is um, the earliest existing Jack featuring Shepherd as Arcanum 16, the terrors of the Brussel Rouen pattern, they continued with that, as we see in uh, later, much later, uh, Belgium, uh, Adam C. Ato Tiero. So you can see this pattern continues in this Tiero tradition. Edition. And with that, we have arrived at one of my favorite historic towers from Jean Noble Tierra. And uh, with that, with the Terra de Marseille, we are here with the new title that gets attributed uh, to Marseille Terra from then on, from the earliest Marseille Terra to all the later ones. So the tower card now is called La Maison Dieu, the House of God. I, yeah, don't, don't... Uh, listen to my French pronunciation, but yeah, the house of God, the title of the card becomes. Another addition to the tower now, we see two people falling from the tower on the ground, even though the tower uh, is not that tall if we really kind of measure the length of the, the, uh, the bodies, right, of those fallen characters. 
but also we see the addition of balls or stones that we can assume that are descending down as well. And with that, uh, here are some more examples from uh, the Marseille Tarot decks. So this is uh, type 2 Pierre Modenier Tarot, um, Jean Payen, 1743, and Nicolas Conver. And now uh, these cards, um, as we did in the Marseille uh, Jean Noble Tarot, we can observe the direction of where the fire is descending to or from, and also the tops of the Type 1 and Jean Noble uh, Tower cards, they, uh, they've always resembled uh, crowns, some sort of a crown to me which uh, can add a, uh, add a extra nuance when interpreting this card also and then uh, this is the example from the early 19th century Jacob Jorge Besançon where the sun seems to be sending the feather-like ignition to strike uh, this tower with three windows that we see in Besançon and in Marseille Tierras as well. These three windows are linked to the story of Saint Barbara who was locked in a tower by her father. Another is also actually used, well, that's why I first found out about the Saint Barbara story a while back, is from this book by Robert M. Place. And while we're here with sort of like Marseille, Besançon tradition, it's just an example from a Swiss from Gasman Tierroy different coloration but the same card title uh, right the house of god this is the tower from the late 18th century atea tarot by jean baptiste Alliet. of course uh, a different tarot as well right in in how it's presented and how the cards are numbered so here we are with poverty and reversed uh, keyword being prison for uh, for this arcanum. Now let's have a look at a few Italian towers. So here we are with the beautiful 17th century, so not uh, alphabetical order, but just more kind of making sense, right? To bring the French Besançon style decks together, return back to Italian ones. So yeah, 17th century Mitelli Tarocchi, where this card, once again, it's not the tower card, but rather the lightning which strikes this character straight into the, their heart. And then in uh, the Minghiate Flo Fiorentina, Florentina, uh, in this card we see Eve, or perhaps Adam and Eve, being kicked out from the Garden of uh, Eden. And um, this is the image from uh, the ancient Italian tarot, which is a version, uh, a version. Um, or by version of Carlo de la Rocca Tiero done by Avondo Brothers. So here we're moving towards the end of 1800s. This tower, along with being uh, struck by lightning, also suggests the an involvement of the human hand in causing the crumbling and the destruction of this construction, as we see here, a uh, part of a cannon. And uh, just look at the little terrified human face here still in the tower and um yeah let me just bring one more example uh piedmontese terror and uh, in this example in in the 19th century piedmontese terror we are with very marseille style tower as this terror is modeled after the marseille tradition 
Now, these two examples are from two existing versions of Oswald Wirth's steroid dating back to 1889 and then later 1926. We notice here how the title uh, of the card uh, has changed from the earlier version from Worth and to the later one. So the earlier one, uh, Le Fou, means the uh, the fire from heaven, when the later one adopts the Marseille Tero title, House of God. Hebrew letter, of course, of Ayn is added with this being uh, the occult hero, and one of the falling people is wearing a crown. And with that, we have now reached the 20th century, uh, this iconic Rider Waite Smith tarot. Again, with one person falling wearing a crown, often those two again are referenced as Adam and Eve. But also, um, uh, the addition of the actual crown as the top of the tower is that uh, new detail perhaps suggestive of the human head right the top of the tower representing the human head and with the crown being uh, almost like cut uh, through the lightning that struck we may speculate and ponder on the psychological destruction that can be associated with the tower card in Tiero and uh, Thoth, um, the last historic card here for today, um, the representation of the tower in uh, the Thoth Tiero is uh, striking at the top of the card. We observe the eye, the eye of God, if you will, and on the bottom we observe the kind of flames and the mouth of uh, hell, so this card um, illustrates that uh, punishment, uh, punishment aspect very strongly. So this is the selection of the historic representations of the tower card that I prepared. So my top five when it comes to the historic tarot my top five historic towers would be the one from Jean Noble Tiero, definitely the one from the Jacob Jorge Besançon. I very much love the Swiss the Gassman uh, Tower as well. Just very, very charming, the Swiss Tiero. The ancient Italian tarot also has to be among my top five historic favorites. But then, um, again, not the official card. I cannot leave this art piece behind, right? This painting that uh, was used by Marco for his personal Visconti Madrona. So they are my five favorite historic cards. And I will try to choose only one of them for the historic representation for my video tomorrow. So we shall see. I'm kind of debating between two of them especially. But now let's have a look at a few contemporary examples of the tower cards. Now, these are three towers. They are the alternatives from Marco Benedetti's Visconti Homage Tiero. And here we see this pattern, right, of the earlier towers of the people of people not being depicted in the card. Then uh, Adam or Eve perhaps walking out of the e Eden Garden and then two characters falling. Then uh, in uh, Patrick Valenza's uh, Triunfi de la Luna, Patrick Valenza also offers two options for us and we can choose between the tower with two delicious characters falling or the lightning with the shepherd with his uh, little kind of whimsical creatures uh, here. 
and you can see that uh, this image is drawn perhaps from the Vivil Tierra or the Brussels Ruans, uh, Ruan de uh, Dex and this tower uh, image is uh, inspired by a Marseille Terro tradition where uh, Robert M. Place in uh, his Terror of the Sevenfold Mystery returns to one of the original names for this trump being fire, which uh, reminds me that over time, while visually the tower card, as we have seen, um, has remained consistent, right? Pretty much unchanged, right? A crumbling building with some kind of lightning striking, some race around um so yeah reasonably consistent right the tower card has remained throughout centuries it did carry a number of names inclusive of the earliest name in in uh, the translation from the italian being the arrow then we have fire devil's house house of god and of course the tower um, uh, being the other uh, titles for this card translated from the italian and french this tower is um, the awesome representation for this key from uh, the Margaret Peterson Tiero and uh, this uh, lightning is from the Gaian Tiero. Here we are with the tower uh, from the Druid Craft Tiero standing uh, in the body of water where in uh, the Tiero uh, of the Abyss, the tower is represented by a crumbling tree house. This um, key 16 is from uh, the Ehrenberg Tiero and uh, this tower is from uh, the Tiero of uh, the Divine and is linked to the story of Rapunzel. To finish off, here is my own tower card uh, in which you see the inspiration behind my cat Solly and my dog Chappy jumping off uh, the Pisa, the tower of Pisa in Italy. I think this little card is more on the fun side of Arcanum 16 and I use the Italian title Solatore, the tower. Uh, but yeah, on the fun side, I kind of, yeah, this tower card makes me smile as not always I take the tower card too seriously, but I will talk more on that in my next video. I also have an alternative with the Eiffel Tower as well with Soli and Chappie because, well, yeah, they're my darling animals and this is my personal pet, Diag. So, yes, um, that is all from me for today. And look, the tower card is not the card I dislike, even though it can be a difficult one, but often um, the needed one too, the one that uh, forces us to break through. I will be back tomorrow with my five favorite tower cards. As I promised, I only choose one historic out of the, my favorite historic ones that I featured and the other four will be from the contemporary decks. I have them already selected and I look forward to sharing them with you. But as for now, please let me know which towers from my selection here today stood out to you if any i am very curious i am sending much love to you all and i wish you a wonderful weekend i hope to see you tomorrow my friends bye for now